I'm your host, John McKenzie, and thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data transformation. This is the first episode for my advanced playlist, where we're going to play around with some more advanced tools and do a little bit of programming. If you're getting more serious about your skills in data analytics and data transformation, you're going to need to learn how to code and get data from all kinds of different databases. So today, we're getting data from Oracle. Let's get to it. Okay, so some background information. I created a table in Oracle and I added two rows to it. Hi, this is a message from Oracle table and Oracle, this is awesome. And if I select from that table in SQL Developer, you can see the data. Okay, to make our little application to connect to Oracle and get some data, we're going to create a new console application in the bb.net uh, new project section of uh, Visual Studio. And we'll call our project Get Oracle Data. And Visual Studio will prepare our console application so that we can start programming. Now to start, um, you can see that there is a module and uh, some other files that are created along with this project. And uh, what we're going to look at is the app.config uh, file because in, in that file is, is where we can put our connection string. So what we'll do is we'll create a connection string section in our, in our config file and we'll add one connection string to it. And there are special properties about the connection string section, um, which I might elaborate in another video on how to do things like encrypt it so other people can't see it and things like that. Uh, but today we'll just paste in our connection string and, and we can prepare that so that we can refer to it in our module. And then we can move ahead and go into our module and we are ready to go. So first what I'm going to do is I'll put a comment along the top just to say what we're doing in this module, if anybody else looks at it. Um, it's always a good idea to put a comment in there. And we can go ahead and get started. In this uh, uh, application we are going to need to add a reference. Um, and we're going to add a reference. Uh, first we'll put an import statement at the top um, to system data, system.data so that uh, we can reference data tables and then we're going to add a reference to um, uh, system.configuration uh, so that uh, we can use the configuration manager and that sort of allows the application to look out into the uh, into the config file and to get things like the connection string. Uh, for a little bit of program flow I will add a console.write line on there so that we can notify the user um, if there's an error. I've added an error, a try catch um, and end try to this so I'm, I'm adding an error message in here so that uh, the user can be notified if something goes wrong uh, and it will also stop the application um, so that it just doesn't flicker with a message and uh, disappear. And I can add another right line in there to say uh, press any key to continue so that uh, the user knows if it does get an error they can it stops and they can just press the key to continue. The next thing we're going to put in there is we're going to uh, get us a string and we're going to use that uh, configuration manager uh, from system.configuration and we're going to get the uh, connection string that we created in the config file that goes with the, uh, the exe when it's created. And I think I'll also add a console message uh, just to show that our application is starting uh, so that the user can see what's happening there. And the next thing we're going to create is our Oracle uh, connection. And we're going to connect using the ODBC 
um, objects that we have access to, uh, which are great for connecting to all different kinds of data sources. So we'll choose the uh, odbc.odbc connection, and in order to do that, we'll put our connection string in as an argument that we got from the config file, and then we're ready to continue. And from there, uh, we'll create our string for SQL, and uh, that will be a simple select string to select data from the table that I showed you the two pictures of uh, from my Oracle um, SQL developer screen. Okay, so we will select my message from my Oracle table, which is the table we created uh, back at the beginning of the tutorial, and we'll order that by uh, the ID number that we created when we created the table and entered the data into it. And then from there, uh, we're going to use a data adapter, also from the ODBC uh, set of objects, and we can uh, add our SQL string and our connection that we created to create the data adapter. And from there, uh, we can create a data set which is a very useful uh, tool from the ADO.NET world. And we'll fill that data set using the data adapter. And uh, we will specify the data set and we'll give it a name. I always like to give my tables names in data sets. A lot of people just use one data set for one table. But you can actually add many tables to it, uh, which makes it very, very handy and versatile for doing uh, very intense data analysis. And from there I'll add a, another right line just to say that we got our data retrieved from Oracle and it, now that it's in the data set we can create a data table to reference one of those uh, one of the tables in the data set which happens to be the only one that we created there and we can cycle through that table by saying uh, for each uh, row in the data table, uh, we are going to uh, take a look at what goes on in there. Okay, as we go through the, the rows in our table after we've opened it, um, I'll throw a little break in the processing just so that we can see it as it happens uh, in the console application when it comes out. So that's going to break for two seconds on that thread and uh, we'll create uh, message um, string to get our message data and we can load that by simply saying that our message string equals uh, the uh, row and the field name from that row and that will reference it and we'll get the uh, the message that's in that field in that table and then once we have that information we can go ahead and uh, write it out onto our console application and it'll display uh, after two seconds. Then we'll close the Oracle connection um, and we'll uh, dispose of the objects that we created uh, just to do some good uh, management. And that will finish the main part of our programming. And then we can Go ahead and save that. And I'll add a read key onto the end of our, our uh, procedure just so that it'll stop um, once it's done processing um, so that we can see what happened. Otherwise, it'll happen so quickly that you'll just see a console pop up and disappear and we won't know what happened there. Um, so we'll add a, a right line as well um, just to say uh, operation complete. And I'll go up above uh, at the beginning and I'll show uh, to the user when uh, we've actually sent the uh, request to Oracle to get the data. And this would be very helpful if it was a very large um, data um, extraction because it would take some time and you would want to know that it actually got past the connection and got started. And then from there, and I'll also add 
a message at the bottom to the user that they can press any key to continue and then we can go to the start button on our uh, toolbar or we can hit F5 on your keyboard and the application will start and as you can see it starts gets data from Oracle the data was retrieved uh, it says uh, hi this message from Oracle table and Oracle is pretty awesome uh, operation complete press any key to continue so we know that it made it to the end without any errors or we'd have, we would have seen an error message and that is how you get data from Oracle Thank you for joining me once again on our channel on data transformation and data analytics. I hope you'll be able to put these skills to good use. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button and click the bell when the bell appears so that you can be notified of any, any uh, new videos that have been put up on our channel. Also, if you have any comments or questions about the material that you saw today, please put them in the comments below and click the like button if you like the content you saw today. In our next advanced playlist video, we will connect to SQL Server using the SQL client, which is a little bit different from the ODBC connection that you saw today. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.